In this video, we will look at the offenses defined in RA number 10175 or the Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012. Also, we will tackle the penalties for those offenses. The first core category of cybercrime refers to the offenses against the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of computer data and systems, starting with illegal access, which refers to unauthorized access to the whole or any part of a computer system. Another offense called illegal interception is the interception made by technical means without right of any non-public transmission of computer data to, from, or within a computer system. There's also data interference and system interference. Data interference is the alteration, damaging, deletion, or deterioration of computer data without right, including the introduction or transmission of viruses. On the other hand, system interference is the hindering of the function of a computer or computer network without authority, including the introduction or transmission of viruses. Any person found guilty of illegal access, illegal interception, data interference, and system interference shall be punished with imprisonment from 6 years and 1 day to 12 years or a fine of at least 200,000 pesos, up to a maximum amount commensurate to the damage incurred or both. Misuse of devices is also included under this category. It is the use, production, sale, procurement, importation, distribution, otherwise making available, or possession of computer devices or data computer password or access code to access a computer system with the intent to commit cybercrime. Any person found guilty of misuse of devices shall be punished with imprisonment from 6 years and 1 day to 12 years or a fine of not more than 500,000 pesos, or both. If illegal access, illegal interception, data interference, system interference, and misuse of devices is committed against critical infrastructure, the penalty of imprisonment from 12 years and one day to 20 years, or a fine of at least 500,000 pesos, up to maximum amount commensurate to the damage incurred, or both, shall be imposed. The next core category of cybercrime is computer-related offenses. The first one in this category is computer-related forgery. It is the input, alteration, or deletion of any computer data without right resulting in inauthentic data with the intent that it be considered or acted upon for legal purposes as if it were authentic. Second, computer-related fraud. It is the unauthorized input, alteration, or deletion of computer data or program or interference in the functioning of a computer system, causing damage thereby with fraudulent intent. Third, computer-related identity theft. It is the intentional acquisition, use, misuse, transfer, possession, alteration, or deletion of identifying information belonging to another without right. Any person found guilty of computer-related forgery, computer-related fraud, and computer-related identity theft shall be punished with imprisonment from 6 years and 1 day to 12 years, or a fine of at least 200,000 pesos up to a maximum amount commensurate to the damage incurred, or both. The last core category in this act is content-related offenses and other cybercrimes. First on the list is child pornography which refers to any representation by electronic, mechanical, digital, optical, magnetic, or any other means of child engaged or involved in real or simulated explicit sexual activities. Any person found guilty of child pornography shall be punished in accordance with the penalties set forth in Republic Act No. 9775 or the Anti-Child Pornography Act of 2009. The penalty to be imposed shall be one degree higher than that provided for in Republic Act No. 9775 if committed through a computer system. Next is cyber squatting. It is the acquisition of a domain name over the internet in bad faith in order to profit, mislead, destroy reputation, and deprive others from registering the same. To understand this better, let's look at an example of cyber squatting that happened in another country. A Wuhan resident, Jing Ren, bought a domain android.co.in from an Indian domain registration platform. He put the website on sale for 19,500 US dollars. It was reported that Google sued him and chose the arbitration proceedings in India because the domain was registered in India. In August 2020, Google won the case. 
the arbitrating committee ordered Jingren to hand over the domain android.co.in to Google. RA number 10175 punishes cyber squatting offenders with imprisonment from 6 years and 1 day to 12 years, or a fine of at least 200,000 pesos up to a maximum amount commensurate to the damage incurred, or both. If cyber squatting is committed against critical infrastructure, the penalty of imprisonment from 12 years and 1 day to 20 years, or a fine of at least 500,000 pesos up to a maximum amount commensurate to the damage incurred, or both shall be imposed. Cyber sex is also defined in this act. It is the willful engagement, maintenance, control, or operation, directly or indirectly, of any lascivious exhibition of sexual organs or sexual activity with the aid of a computer system for favor or consideration. Any person found guilty of cyber sex shall be punished with imprisonment from 6 years and 1 day to 12 years, or a fine of at least 200,000 pesos, but not exceeding 1 million pesos, or both. Cyber sex involving a child shall be punished in accordance with the provision of child pornography of the Act. Next is cyber libel. It is the unlawful or prohibited acts of libel committed through a computer system or any other similar means which may be devised in the future. The following are the elements of cyber libel. There must be an imputation of a crime or of a vice or defect, real or imaginary, or any act, omission, condition, status, or circumstance. The imputation must be made publicly, which requires that at least one other person must have seen the libelous post in addition to the author and the person defamed or alluded to in the post. The imputation must be malicious, which means that the author of the libelous post made such post with knowledge that it was false. The person or organization defamed is identifiable. The imputation must tend to cause the dishonor, discredit, or contempt of the person defamed. The imputation was done through the use of a computer system or any other similar means which may be devised in the future. Cyber libel shall be punished with imprisonment from 4 years, 2 months and 1 day, to 6 years, up to imprisonment from 6 years and 1 day, to 8 years, or a fine ranging from 6,000 pesos up to the maximum amount determined by the court, or both. This is in addition to the civil action which may be brought by the offended party. The provision applies only to the original author of the post or online libel, and not to others who simply receive the post and react to it. Any person who willfully abets, aids, or financially benefits in the commission of any of the cybercrime offenses shall be held liable. Moreover, any person who willfully attempts to commit any of the cybercrime offenses shall be held liable too. They shall be punished with imprisonment of one degree lower than that of the prescribed penalty for the violation or a fine of at least 100,000 pesos, but not exceeding 500,000 pesos, or both. RA number 10175 actually criminalized the transmission of commercial electronic communication with the use of computer system, which seek to advertise, sell, or offer for sale products and services. The law, however, made exceptions when spamming is allowed, and these are when any of these conditions are present. There is prior affirmative consent from the recipient or the primary intent of the communication is for service and administrative announcements from the sender to its existing users, subscribers, or customers. Or the following conditions are present. The commercial electronic communication contains a simple, valid, and reliable way for the recipient to reject. The commercial electronic communication does not purposely disguise the source of the electronic message. And the commercial electronic communication does not purposely include misleading information in any part of the message in order to induce the recipients to read the message. However, in the February 11, 2014 decision of the Philippine Supreme Court in the consolidated cases ruled that spamming is not illegal. According to the court, the government presents no basis for holding the unsolicited electronic ads reduce the efficiency of computers. The recipients still have the option of not opening or reading these mail ads and have the option to delete or not to read them. And the recipient should also not be denied the right to read his email, even unsolicited commercial ads addressed to him.